Let's touch stone on how we take this very simple white noise model and adjust it to actually start to pick up and absorb some of the autocorrelation structures that we spent last week exploring. So just to walk through this white noise model real quickly, once again, we have our observed value here as y sub t. We have some constant that's being fit to the data, which in the white noise process ends up being the, the mean value. And then an error, which describes the variance that you see around this constant. Then as a reminder up here, the error at time t is simply a function of the mean and the standard deviation. So let's take this equation and let's do one simple modification to turn it into something that incorporates autoregression into it. And to do that, we simply add some coefficient, which I'll call beta, and the value, value of y, or observation, at t minus 1, so one time step back. And with that very simple modification, what we have done is we have created an autoregressive model, where the value at the previous time step, y sub t minus 1, is one of the predictors of the value of y that we see at time t. And we sometimes will refer to this as an a r one model, or an order of one. And that one, of course, is referring to the number of lags that we have incorporated into the model. So we've incorporated one lag here, t minus one, so we have an a r one, or an autoregress model with an order of one. And so to turn this model into an a r two, or an autoregressive model with an order of two, two time lags, all I would do is add a coefficient times y at t minus 2. Oh, except that now I've got two coefficients. They are not identical coefficients. So I have a separate coefficient for the lag of 1 and a separate coefficient that will be fitted for the lag of 2. And now this is an AR2 model. And I think you get the idea. The more orders we add, the more terms we add for each one of these time lags. And now this is no longer a white noise process, but an autoregressive model. Now let's turn a white noise model into a moving average model. So we'll start with that core equation that came to us through the white with white noise. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add that influence of the error from previous time steps uh, to create a moving average model. And we'll do this by adding a, another coefficient times the error at t minus 1. And now this is a moving average model. And this one in particular, we might call an MA2, MA1, an MA1. If I wanted to turn this one into an MA2, I do exactly what I did with the autoregressive model and add that error information from two time steps previously. And again, I have a separate coefficient for each one of those lags. And so all of this is building directly upon what we learned last week for about autocorrelation structure. But now we're actually thinking about this in the context of not trying to just disentangle how our data points are correlated together, but how do you model that information to be able to better fit the data. Of course, autoregressive and moving average aren't mutually exclusive options. A uh, time series doesn't have to be just a moving average process or an autoregressive process, it might be a mixture of the two. And so we can combine these elements into a single model that uh, fits both an autoregressive and a moving average component. To do something like that with both is very simple in this framework. We just put the elements that right now we have in separate equations into the same equation. Say I want to predict the value at time t. I'll have some fitted constant. I still have some error term associated with my values at time t. And so maybe for this model, for this data, I happen to have a moving average process. We'll do it as a t minus 1 and, and a autoregressive component. In this case, also at t minus 1. And this is something that we would call an ARMA model, something that combines autoregressive, AR, and moving average, MA. To jump it up one more step in complexity, we get to the ARIMA model. 
in a NREMA model that I, the integrated component, allows you to fit a time series model if you have a trend in the data. And uh, the way it does it is by not adding any more terms to the right-hand side of equation, it modifies that left-hand side of the equation. So one way to think about this is that that integrated component of an ARIMA is trying to flatten out your data by taking effectively something residual like, and then use the autoregressive and moving average components to pull out the rest of the signal out of the data. So say I have a ARIMA model where I want to have a difference of one for fitting a trend in my data, then I might fit y sub t minus y sub t minus one is equal to, and now the, what we've been looking at for our modeling with the moving average component and the autoregressive component. And so it's the values being fit that change if you have something going on with that I or integrated component as opposed to adding more terms to the right. And just like the other components, your order for the I for the differencing can be greater than one, which just means you have differences that go further and further back in time on that left-hand side of the equation. And so now this is the basic ARIMA model that we can make our fit for us uh, with varying lags in both the moving average component and the autoregressive component and an ability to account for any uh, trends we see in our data. So let's go back to our studio and make our do this with our data.